Okay, great. Now that we've got our game manager tied in, we're ready to really start laying this out to handle multiple stores. And so to do that, let's go ahead and expand our canvas and look at our store panel. And one of the things that we can do with Unity is we can create a template for this. And we'll look at that, how that would be real advantageous in, in one of our, in, when we do the managers for the stores. In this case, um, what we're going to do is just see how we can duplicate it. So we're just going to duplicate and bring this down. And we're going to go ahead and open up our panel. And we'll call this our pet store. Well, it didn't get my change there. I'll try it again. Pet store. We'll call it pet store panel. And we can change now the name of the text here to say pet store down here. Let's call this pet store. So it's really that simple. Let's make one more. And drag it down. Now, if, if you're a, a, a more advanced, you're thinking, hey, you could make a prefab out of that. Yeah, we're going to look at that um, in, in a later lecture. This is for people that are just seeing how that, especially in this case, for, for, for what we're doing, it'll work perfectly fine. So in this one, let's make a uh, supermarket. And we'll call this name uh, supermarket. So we'll just take it down this far. Now, there's some real advantages in some ways to using Unity's editor for game design because it will give you a lot of things uh, that allow you to configure your gameplay and test it out. And I'll show you what I mean. Right now, if you look at our store panel, which this first store panel just says store panel, let's call it lemonade panel. So we're basically using Unity's uh, editor to, to, to configure our stores here. But you'll notice like under Lemonade panel, we don't have anything but our store count text, our progress slider, and our game manager. Essentially, I've only exposed the objects we needed to drag and drop. And I've left things like the price of the store, and I've left things like the, the profit on the store, and the timer things that would be kind of important to the gameplay, I've left them not exposed. And so let's see how we can um, quickly, just using what we already know, make those available. So I'm going to go to our store here and double click it. So we'll bring up our, our script for our store. And what we're going to do is we're going to say this base store cost, we're going to make it public. And we're going to make our base store profit, make it public. And, you know, these, and the timer, I'm going to actually bring it up here as well. I'm going to actually take it from down there and bring it up here. And, and that's our store timer. And so I'm going to actually put a little comment here, and it's good. It's, we're going to call this uh, public uh, variables. Um, and and it, they're kind of exposed variables. In other words, these are the things uh, that are definable. Um, in, in terms of uh, uh, define gameplay. So these are going to define our gameplay. How much the store costs, how much profit you're going to make on the store, and the store timer. And we're just making them public. Now these things, like you know the count of the store, that's not, not as configurable at this point, but we're going to see how that's go that, that is certainly going to be uh, um, an issue as well, because we want, the uh, as we unlock stores, eventually... We're only going to want the first store to have one by default. When, when we unlock our our next stores, we might uh, you know start them off with zero. But you know again, we're we're doing this a step at a time, and we'll add functionality as we go. So, but for now, we'll keep these private. Now, when we do this, we want to take this out of the start because what this is is this is what is called hard coding. A lot of developers would call this hard coding our variables. If we 
hard coded a dollar fifty and fifty cents into something that we really need to define as part of our scene, as part of our instance. So I'm actually going to take these out of here. Just take them out because they're public and they're floats, and they really need they do need to be defined. If we don't define them um, in our scene, um, things aren't going to work the way they're supposed to anyway. So let's save that. And let's see what happens when we run that. So nothing really happened. Um, if we go here to eliminate panel, you'll notice it's zero. Zero cost, zero profit. So I can buy as many of these as I want. It's not going to cost me any money. But also, if I click on it and move it, it's not going to make me any money. So I just wanted you to see what happens when we expose these with, with zeros. But now it gets interesting because we can say we want our lemonade stores to cost two dollars we want our profit on each to be 75 cents and we want the timer to say be three seconds instead of four now let's go down to our pet store and let's make that store cost six dollars and the profit is going to be a dollar and let's make the timer six seconds and now let's go down to our supermarket and let's make it a lot more. Let's make it cost $25. Let's make the profit say five, six dollars and the timer even longer, 12 seconds. Okay, you see what we're doing here. Now I hit play and now we, we do have one of each of these and so there you see the flaw in, in uh, somewhat the design. So we can expose that variable as well next. Um, but when I hit buy store on the supermarket, no, I can't, notice I can't buy any. I hit the pet store, I bought one, but it took us to zero. Now I can't buy any more. And I can click and run the, sp the pet store. I can click to run the lemonade, and I can click to run the supermarket. But you'll notice how they're each on their own timer when I click them. They each have their own counters, and they each have their own cost, and they each make their own amount of money when 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 they uh, go so I can't buy any supermarkets because I don't have twenty five dollars see how long it takes to get to twenty five dollars but you get the idea is that we now have multiple stores how can we get it so that we don't we have zero of these okay what we can do is we can just explore expose that store count the same way as we did these. So we're going to have public int store count and get rid of it here. I just could have just put the public in front of that one and get rid of it here and save. And so now inside of our lemonade panel We'll set the store count to one, and all the rest can default to zero. And so now, when we run it, oh, it's not updating our it's not updating our text. Okay, so if we're updating, you know, we only had it in the buy on click, updating the text. So we would have to take this and just copy it now. It's just a Probably not the best design to do it this way. In fact, I'll tell you it's not the best design. But it basically just means when it starts out, it'll set that that score uh, store count text to be to be what it's supposed to be. So no, now we don't have any pet stores, and you know we can't buy a supermarket. We don't have enough money. The pet stores cost six bucks. We have just enough to buy it. But just so you can see, you can do this real time. This might be something you may or may not know. Your beginner, but I can change this. Oh, actually, that was the timer. Um, store timer. But I can change the base store cost, say, to 12. And now, when I check it, I don't have enough. I can go up here and change it to $4. And now I had enough and it took it off. So you can change these values in real time, and I would encourage that um, for you to play with it. So we can that we, we own a pet store now. We can click here. Uh, to start it, notice how this timer is slower than this timer. And this timer 
Notice we don't have anything to prevent us from click it. We're not going to make any money when it ends. It's going to, you know, it's still going to let us click it, but we're not going to make any money. And you can see how much slower that timer is because we set it. So you can now at this point create multiple stores. Each of them can have their own prices. Um, they're unlockable. Uh, or I should say they're not really unlockable, but obviously if you don't have enough money to buy it, you can click this all you want and it doesn't do anything. So even though it's not the most friendly interface, from a gameplay standpoint, you can test out a lot of it right now by seeing, you know, clicking and buying and running, running these things. So, you know, we're, we're starting to get the the starty the the real core for the game here and we've already got multiple stores just a matter of configuring them um, and copying and pasting them